Hello students of class 10. Uh, as you know, for your second unit, you have two poems from your bliss book. That is Sea Fever and The Snake. Today our focus will be on Sea Fever by John Maysfield. Maysfield, uh, he was a poet, uh, means uh, uh, English poet and uh, he um, was a poet laureate too. Laureate means an honor conferred on him. And uh, uh, he, also, he has also written novels. Apart from that, uh, an interesting part of his uh, career is that he himself was a sailor. And did, I mean, uh, he was his uh, association uh, with sea uh, had been for a long time. And when he was a sailor, he had enjoyed this life of a sailor um, very much and that is the reason you know why you know he um, wants to once again go back to the sea as we will see in this poem uh, another thing is that this particular um, title sea fever uh, tells us uh, that his love for nature that is he wants to once again go back to nature though it is uh, there that you know when he was uh, spending his life as a sailor he used to read a lot and uh, he used to write also and only then he realized that his actual passion was for writing but nevertheless even though he became a very famous writer he always wanted to uh, go back to the sea and relive his life. Now let us first read the poem Sea Fever. I must go down to the seas, to the lonely sea and sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind song and the wild sails shaking and the grey mist on the sea's face and a grey dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again. For the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with white clouds flying and the flung spray and the blown spew and the seagulls crying. I must down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gulf's way and the waves' way where the winds like a wetted night. And all I ask is a merry young from a laughing fellow rover and a quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long drinks go. So, there are three stanzas. Every stanza, he begins with the same line. I must go down to the seas again. This again word tells us that this is not the first time he's, he's going to go is going to make a sea voyage. He has been on sea earlier. And this must word also tells us something else that there is a sort of, you know, um, compulsion in him. Nobody is telling him to go to the sea once again, but it is his own inner compulsion that is, uh, you know, telling him that he has to go and relive his uh, life means he wants to relive his life as a sailor and this word sea fever you must be wondering that why has it been named sea fever sea as you can understand his, his, his association with sea fever by fever now fever means not in a, uh, means uh, he's not having any temperature as such. But fever, when we have fever, there is another thing also in us. That is a uh, kind of a feeling uh, uncomfortable. Okay, we don't feel the normal way. There's a sort of uh, uh, not normal uh, feeling, means restlessness in us. So in the same way, 
the poet is also restless to go back to the sea and relive his past experiences that is why he starts the very first stanza saying that i must go down to the seas again to the lonely sea and sky lonely sea that is he wants to go there alone and lonely sea the sea is not lonely it is his loneliness within that he is talking lonely sea and sky and all i ask that is what does the poet want he says give me a tall ship a tall ship means a ship that is very strong that can um, bear with every uh, difficult situation because uh, a sea won't be a very gentle sea always it can be rough sea it can be a um, very stormy sea so if the sea, ship is not well built it won't be able to withstand all all that and the star to steer her by so the star what will the star do the star will guide the uh, poet in the right direction and the wheels kick and the wind song and the white sails shaking the wheels kick you know through this particular phrase wheels kick the poet is um, telling us that it is a um, he is talking of a rough sea uh, a sea um, uh, uh, means uh, rather you can say a rough sea that is a stormy sea why because wheel skip means uh, when the uh, poet is trying to steer the wheel and it is going out of control spinning out of control and then you know they the backlash there is a kick over there that's why he's saying the wheel skip that means he is talking of a rough sea and the wind song and the white sail shaking yes if it is a rough sea you will naturally hear the sound of the wind which appears to him as a song so see he is um, applying all the um, um no uh, good um uh, words to nature that is you know even it's a rough sea he is saying the uh, wind's song okay so uh, that that shows his love for nature wind song white uh, sail shaking yes we know that in old age there is to be uh, long uh, sails on the ship so the actually the sails will shake in the wind the gray mist on the sea's face this you know lonely sea sea's face that is he is personifying that is he is giving um, human qualities to uh, you know the sea the gray mist on the sea's face mist as you know it will give a gray appearance and uh, mist happens you know when the uh, tiny droplets are suspended in air and that's why you know you have a grayish uh, appearance um, in the atmosphere same for the sea also and the gray dawn breaking that is that means he wants to uh, go out um, at the very dawn and the gray dawn breaking that is gradually you know the daylight is uh, means, uh, the night is turning into day that is the very early hours in the morning i must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild and clear call that may not be denied the it seems to the poet as though you know the he can hear the call of the running tide and as though it uh, uh, the tide is calling him to come back to the seas sea again and he says that it is a wild and clear call so this particular word wild tells us that uh yeah his very uh, sense of adventure okay he his wonder thirst um to um know the unknown to see the unseen so it's a wild and clear call that may not be deny that is i cannot deny that i have to go to the sea means uh, what he is trying to say is that this restlessness in me won't die down unless i go back to the sea and uh, maybe you know he is 
in his present condition he wants to find some peace and he uh, would find that peace in the lap of nature that's why he wants to go back to the sea and all i ask is a windy day with white clouds flying windy day means wind if the wind is favorable it will help uh, the sh help him to steer the ship and white clouds flying that is a um, pleasant weather and the flung spray and the blown spume the flung spray that is uh, when the ship cuts across the um, uh you know um waves of the sea you know it the you know waves break up and you know it, it, there's spray of water and if the uh, somebody is standing on the deck they can literally feel the water on the face so you know in this poem also um the images are such as so you know we can literally you know see them in front of our eyes and also feel them okay so he is appealing to all our five senses through this poem and the flung spray and the blown spume spume is a foam that is created and the seagulls cry so he wants to ha uh, see means he is uh, talking from his past experiences but he is saying in such a way as though uh, you know we can uh, means uh, as means um, we can literally hear the seagulls crying okay the call seagull seagulls are not crying he is means the call of the seagulls okay he is um, it's such you know as though it appears to him as crying so thank you students we stop here today we'll do the rest of it in the next class thank you